Hello, uh, it's Mark. Uh, making another video here, and uh, I wanted to say a few things about uh, one of Fred's posts today. It was um, uh, his, his Fred Wilson's uh, blog post, uh, and it was in regard to the semantic web and uh, and actually to uh, opposing views to. Um, the ability for the internet to get a little smarter about how uh, different words and pages and links uh, and images all relate to each other. Um, first off, what's a semantic web? Uh, what it means is, for any piece of information you have on the internet, uh, there's data, it's called metadata usually, and it's in a machine readable or understandable terminology. And, uh, what that means is, why do they call it semantic? It's because uh, well, semantic actually gets into the meaning of words, the essence and uh, uh, the, the, the true uh, concept that a word uh, imparts. And different people have different meanings for different words, and that causes some problems. And that's one of the arguments against uh, the web having a good, you know, a semantic web. You know, the internet can't really. Uh, have machine understandable words if we don't agree on their meaning. But I think this argument is pretty easy, you know, to take apart because, um, you know, we're we're individuals, right? And we have our own uh, definitions and uh, data sets and algorithms built into our brains, the uh, complicated neurons and synapses and all that stuff. But uh, the internet is sort of this conglomerate of information and. The definition databases can be consistent. Uh, right now they use Wikipedia, which people say, well, that can be exploited because anybody can go in there and change links. All right, so what? You can uh, People can steal money from banks, but that doesn't stop banks from being around. So, I mean, that, that argument doesn't, you know, doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if Wikipedia is a reliable way to connect uh, words to ideas and other pages and links, then um, it's a good definition. And the algorithms that are being used, um, you know, they can be automated. And uh, to an extent, if uh, for one set of algorithms, there, I, each set of algorithms would have its own version of the internet as far as uh, the words, the metadata, the tags that are associated with pages. One of the pieces of information that's missing is relationships. So I, I think they try to take this into account, but I'm almost positive they don't have it down yet. And you know, when, uh, when you use adjectives to describe things, when you, the big one is analogies. When you make an analogy to something that is nothing like it, but has a similar pattern or has a, you know, something in common um, to help other people understand it by taking an analogy between something. Uh, you understand, and something that's new, uh, you can begin to understand the new thing. Uh, I think it's the same thing for computers. If you have, if they have some fundamental um, key relationships, then by analogy we can help the you know the machines learn a little bit more about uh, the relationship between web pages, about blogs, about uh, news, about uh, you know real-time status updates for people. Um, and it can sort of make, an, there could be an automated system for understanding the relevancy of these different things in regards to different tags uh, or topics. I've got my own ideas about this because I want to work in this area and I have, to, I have some ideas for some tools that can already be put together based on uh, existing software. It's a matter of me getting over that hurdle, uh, which is I suck at web programming and I'm trying to learn it from scratch. and. Uh, there's just so many little nuances to platforms you can build on, and I think I have to just start simple and uh, stay away from the things that are too complicated. But, <clears throat> you know, I think that the semantic web is realizable, and it's only a matter of time. I mean, it's my argument, uh, in addition to, you know, people that say, well, we're biological machines, we're just really complicated, so the way, you know, we make analogies is different than the way uh, programs do. Um, 
know, software is usually pretty restrictive. Oop. Just moving. And um, what we have to do is, you know, kind of be smart about how we um, build the semantic web and allow for iterative update. Words change meaning over time. Um, things that were impossible become possible, and things that you know just don't necessarily make sense at the time become proven kind of facts after a while. And uh, you know, a great example of that is Moore's law, and we just didn't understand how far it would go. And and there's uh, you know correlated industries where it's also taken effect, and you know it just it's happened. It's 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 reality now. It's not just. Uh, uh, somebody, you know, drawing a line and putting some points in it. Uh, we we realize that there are limitations to technology, and uh, and there's transitions that are made when you hit the boundaries. But um, you know, as far as the semantic web goes, ten years, maybe twenty years, um, maybe less, maybe five years, and uh, there might be different versions of it. Uh, as different algorithms and tools come together and um, derive knowledge uh, about different links and, and, and websites and words and, and they develop their own kind of core analogies and then build up from those analogies. Uh, just some ideas. Thanks for listening. Bye.